Zephaniah 3 is the final chapter of this book and contains a full picture of the judgment of Jerusalem, the coming unification of the nations, and a time for Israel's restoration. It's the final pre-exilic minor prophet that we have before Haggai, a post-exilic prophet who speaks about the rebuilding of the temple. But as for Zephaniah, this final message begins with a hard-hitting indictment of Jerusalem's sin. Verses 3 through 4 tell us that in Jerusalem, her officials with her are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves that leave nothing till the morning. Her prophets are fickle, treacherous men. Her priests profane what is holy. They do violence to the law. The sin of Israel isn't described as a lion crouching at the door or hidden in some capacity, but instead is a roaring lion. You see, the sin of all of their leaders, those who are meant to be gatekeepers to righteousness, was so pronounced that it stood in stark contrast to the righteousness of God who does know injustice. Here's where I find encouragement in this chapter, though. The sinfulness of the people of Jerusalem wasn't for one moment lost on God. Our sins, after all, can't be hidden from an all-knowing God, and he has every right to punish sin, and he's correct to do so. But even when the stark contrast between the sinfulness of Jerusalem and the righteousness of God is revealed, the chapter still ends with the mercy of God restoring Israel. God's desire isn't to crush his people, but to purify them through his great mercy. That's the heart of God, even when the people are at odds with him. Now that we live under a new covenant of redemption through grace and forgiveness of sin through believing in Jesus Christ, we too can have full assurance of God's character, that even if our sin is flagrant, and so opposed to God, if we repent and turn to him, he will forgive us and cleanse us. So how about you? Will you turn or even return to God who's waiting for you with open arms today?